Oh, here it is. Good evening, councillors and guests. I call the uh, second uh, budget hearing um, meeting to order. Here we are before the Finance um, Committee of the Council for Tuesday evening, June 2nd. Councillor Cruz. <coughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd uh, like to take a moment of personal privilege, if I may. Uh, Brockton lost a, uh, a great and inspirational woman uh, this past uh, couple of days. In fact, uh, most of you who were at the parade saw her this past week, but uh, uh, the leading gold star mother and a true inspiration to everyone in the city, uh, Elsie Cataret, passed away. And uh, I can only tell you that in all of my years, she, was, uh, she did better in the parade than I did all those years. And she truly was an inspiration. Lost her son over 50 years ago in Vietnam and uh, never complained and taught us all what, uh, what it means to be a supportive mother in, uh, of this country. So if we could have a moment of silence for Elsie Cataret, I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Councillor. May she rest in peace. Just a couple of uh, quick items, uh, Council. I just want to make um, mention too before we get uh, before we do get underway. Just um, I want to indicate that today was Italian Republic Day here at uh, the City of Brockton, uh, City of Champions, and uh, I guess I have every right to make that announcement. Am I correct, Council Denapoli? Um, and so I do nice, want to indicate that Council Denapoli and I were present here uh, this morning as um, there was a, a brief ceremony. Uh, in the rotunda area um, with the mayor, Mayor Bill Carpenter, members of the Sons of Italy, Christopher Columbus Lodge, and also uh, Italian American war vets, um, Councillor DiNapoli and, and I, and as well uh, uh, former uh, city councillor Todd Petty was also, uh, also present at the same time, and of course Master of Ceremonies was another former city councillor, George Cataldo. So, um, you know, with that being said, it was a very nice, uh, it was a very nice morning, and, and uh, we definitely. Uh, Definitely um, want to thank the, uh, the mayor and all those that, um, you know, keep recognizing uh, different heritages here in the city of Brockton, um, no different from any other mayor that's been doing it over the last several years, and I think it's important that we continue to do that. But uh, I, I guess as uh, Dennis and I would probably say, it's great to be Italian. So congratulations. Thank Councilor you. Dinapoli. Thank you. Appreciate it. The other item I just want to make mention to, um, Councilor uh, Azak called me a, a this afternoon and she's going to be on her way. She's just attending an award ceremony at Brockton High School for her daughter this evening. And Councilor Rodriguez is um, coming in from uh, working uh, out of the city, I think he said, and it should be here um, within about the half hour. So with that being said, um, and the only other thing I'm going to say is I mentioned last night and I'll continue to mention um, each night till we finish that I do want to stay on schedule um, or, or pretty much stay on the budget and then I think that's most important and to deviate away from it I think we need to stay on what is before us and not so much of, of what is going to be five six seven years from now that's not the thrust of what we have before us but I do want to just stay um, stay on track and uh, and we'll get through um, we'll get through this uh, night as, as well as we did uh, last night so with that all being said we're all ready to um, to start and uh, Madam Clerk we have our first uh, guest Planning Board Wayne McAllister Chairman Good evening, Mr. May. Good evening, Mr. President, Councillors. Um, I would like to, you know, for the record, uh, Wayne McAllister uh, is on medical absence. Um, the new chair of the planning board is David Wheeler, who he is the um, principal over at the South East Educational um, Tech, and uh, he has a previous engagement this evening, um, a, a school meeting, so he could not be here this evening. So I'm representing the planning board. Very good. Any uh, questions or concerns, Councilor Cruz? Actually, I just want a question that, uh, that maybe Jay can answer. And I've noticed in about two or three departments that we carry a little bit of postage, but I thought all the City Hall postage came out of the auditor's office, Jay. It's a minor amount, but I noticed it in two or three departments last night, too. Yeah, they have the franking machine, but some of the other offices have a small amount of postage that they just take care of in their own budgets. Their own for the, okay, I just, uh, mm -hmm. it's usually 150 or $200, but I know that most years we don't even have it in those department budgets, so I just, I thought about it last night. <coughs> thank you. That's thank all, you. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Sullivan. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I don't have any questions about the budget. Um, I do just want to make a statement to say, uh, as a Councilor Lodge for 10 years, I'm very, very disappointed that Jim McCarthy is not on the planning board. If those of you that know Jim McCarthy, he's apolitical, uh, he's an electrician, and he was a great member of the planning board, so I'm truly disappointed. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions or concerns in regards to the uh, 
planning department. Seeing none. Thank, Thank you, Mr. May. Good evening. Madam Clerk, our next uh, guest. Conservation Commission, Stephanie Danielson, Chairman. Good evening, Mr. President and Councillors. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Good. Any statement? Or? Um, I, just a brief comment. I every year thank the Council for their support with the Conservation Commission. We have a tough job. It's not the most, um, uh, what's the word I want to say, uh, politically friendly. People don't always um, understand what the role of the Conservation Commission is, but it is about protecting the natural resources for the city of Brockton as well as real property. Um, and the council has been a great asset to the count committee over the years. Um, we're looking for a very slight increase in our consultant budget mm -hmm. this year. And that money is usually spent on projects that come out of the mayor's office, sometimes out of the planning department, um, things like looking at land for suitability for city use, that type of thing. Very good. Thank you. Councilors, any uh, questions? Councilor Hans? Uh, Ms. Danielson, the consultant, is that, um, well, I would assume that would be an outside firm or some sort yes. of outside um, investigation service. Is it the same one that the city's used in the past and their fees have gone up, or are you looking to No, their out? fees, their fees I have not gone up. They're under a three-year contract with us, and we're okay. entering the third year of that contract. Uh, the consultant is Nova Armstrong Associates. They are an envi environmental consulting firm, mm -hmm. and a lot of their business is providing peer review services to municipalities. Um, the increase is to cover additional expenses that have been occurred, um, incurred over the um, you know, that we expect to incur over the upcoming year based on the past year. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Councilor. Any other questions, uh, Councilors? Councilor Cruz. Thank you. Actually, just a comment, and I don't usually do this, but great based job. on what uh, Ms. Danielson was saying, um, it is a job that sometimes can be politically v v a tough job, and uh, I just like to say that I think the uh, Conservation Commission has done a great job. When I first got on they were not always willing to listen. I think they've done a great job of protecting the city's assets while at the same time helping to uh, allow some things to get done in the right way. So I think you do a great job up there, and I, I want to thank you for it. Thank you, and you're welcome. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions, Councillors? Seeing none. Good evening. Thank you for being thank here. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Park Commission, Timothy Carpenter, Superintendent. Good evening, Mr. Carpenter. How are you? Fine, thank you. Good. <coughs> Any uh, presentation for us? To um, well, thank you for having me here this evening. Um, I would like to take this time to publicly thank uh, all the employees of the Park Department, uh, both those de uh, designated to the Park Department uh, for their dedication and hard work over the course of the year, as well as those assigned to the golf course, uh, again, for their hard work and dedication. <laughs> and I would be remiss if I um, did not mention my secretary. Um, she. Uh, puts up with me and keeps me in line. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I will open for questions. Sounds like Laurie Monaghan. <laughs> no comment. No comment. Questions, councillors? <laughs> Councillor Stewart? Actually, uh, Mr. Carpenter, just, just a general question around, not the budget <coughs> specifically, but I know there was this big push to think differently about the park space in the city, how many baseball fields versus soccer fields and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> Where have we landed on that? Um, you're absolutely right. There is a need for some soccer fields. Um, and what we've done is we've started to utilize what used to be the softball field at Hillstrom Farm Park um, up off of North Cary and North Ave uh, as a youth soccer facility. So we are looking for other spaces to utilize for soccer. Um, we just put soccer nets down at North Junior High uh, to try and increase our field space for soccer. Okay. And is that part of, because I, I was under the impression there was a master plan in the works to kind of figure this all out holistically, but it doesn't sound like that's what you're describing right now. Um, well, I think in general um, there is sort of a broad, a very broad sort of a little bit undeveloped master plan. Um, but this is the, the sort of first year that we've seen a significant decline, um, to be honest with you, in the need for baseball fields. Uh, there have some been some leagues that actually haven't fielded teams this year. 
Um, so this is the first year that we've seen field space become available. Um, so we haven't <coughs> banked on being able to utilize that space for um, other sports. Okay, and a question around specifically for Pig Park, the one by the Russell School. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know you guys are doing some seeding of grass there and, and I guess rotating the use of that, that field. How is that coming along? Um, we had a, a very successful year uh, last fall um, overseeding that field. Um, we did it approximately three times. Uh, and then what we did was we actually put up temporary fence around it um, just to make sure people didn't um, hurt the turf before it got established. Um, I feel like that backfield, which is probably the one that you're speaking of, which was in the worst condition, is probably been, is as of right now, in the best condition I've ever seen it. Okay, great. Right. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. you. Thank Mr. you, Councilor. Councilor Cruz. Uh, thank you. Uh, just, I'm looking at one item in your budget. Under uh, on call is 34,370. What is that? Uh, we do have a contractual obligation for an on call for um, all of my general foremen. In case of some kind of As, yes emergency at one of the right. parks or, or up at DW. Yep. Okay. Um, and with the adding the soccer field up there, the girls' softball has not been impacted. Are they are they playing at the Raymond? Or? They're playing both at the Raymond and at the Hancock. <laughs> Hancock. Yep. And they they're happy they've got Absolutely. A, enough fields for yep. that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilor Councilor Bounds. Um, actually, no, I'm all set. Thank you. All set. Yes, okay. thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilor Sullivan. <laughs> thank you. Good evening, Mr. Coppin. How are you? Good evening. Fine, thank you. Um, just uh, just had three questions relative to the budget. On the, the full time, when I co uh, compare 2015 to 2016, full time salary, it's about a $70,000 increase. Is that, is that another one position or raises, or what, what is that, Tim? Um, that, there's a combination of things in there. We do have some money in there for a step increase. Okay. Um, we are also looking to um, restructure the department um, somewhat, and there would be, hopefully, if the restructuring goes okay, uh, one position available. So the, the restructuring is to bring on one additional, have other duties, but bring on one additional body? Hopefully. That's the hope. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, and then there was just two other increases, which weren't a lot of money, but I just want to know what they were. For park improvements, um, it's $10,000, and for golf course improvement, it was a 20000 increase. I think that's both great, but can you just explain what those improvements would be relative to the, the park improvements? Uh, relative to the park improvements, uh, I think most of the equipment that was installed in the parks around the city was probably installed in the late 70s, early 80s, um, and it's all galvanized older play equipment. Um, and while it is still grandfathered and acceptable by um, public safety standards, it is something that I would like to pursue replacing um, over the next couple of years. Uh, not only to improve the looks, but also to improve the safety and functionality of the parks. Okay. I know that some, some of the, uh, not necessarily in Brockton, but some of the other different parks throughout the Commonwealth, they're getting rid of, for liability purposes, getting rid of the uh, concept of swings, which uh, to my kids' dismay. Um, do, you, do you envision that happening here as well? I personally don't. Um, I know I enjoyed swings when I was a kid. I know my kids love swings. Um, but you know, in terms of, you know, using swings as an example, the ones that we have, if you'll notice, have three bays. So there'll be three swings right next to each other. Um, as you upgrade, you have to knock it that down to two so that there's what they call a safety exit way. Okay. So if there's three swings, the child in the middle doesn't necessarily have a safe exit route. So it would be, you know, if we had a bank of six swings, we would then have to go down to four. Okay. Um, but I don't see the need to get rid of swings. Okay, no, I, I concur with that 100%. And then the 20 grand for the golf course, what, what, what would that, I mean, that's <coughs> short money for golf course improvement, but what, what do you envision for that? A lot of the bunkers on the golf course are almost 100 years old. Yeah. Um, and what's happening is with the splash of the sand, they're actually moving towards the greens. Um, and as the heavier equipment passes over that area, then you have cave-ins and they become closer and closer to the greens. It's really a situation where um, a lot of those bunkers there need to be uh, completely refaced, the sand replaced, and drainage installed, 
Um, it opens up the course during wet weather quicker. Um, there's also a lot of car path work that needs to be done. Um, <clears throat> just quickly off the top of my head, the fifth uh, car path coming down the big hill there, yep. it's a constant washout. Um, and to throw stone dust in there every time it rains, so, I mean, it's just got to be paved as much as I absolutely despise blacktop on golf courses. Um, that's an area where it's an absolute requirement. Okay. Council Monaghan likes the bunkers the way they are because the ball for his shot, it <laughs> dribbles, dribbles onto the green like that. So oh, he likes he's to so you can putt right it. through him. Is that how it is? Yeah, okay. yeah, that's how it, it is. At least I can make a green. Thank, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Council. Council Denapoli. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Carpenter. Good evening, sir. The position that you have, uh, that you have uh, going to be funded, the uh, Supervisor of Recreation, will that be uh, advertised after July 1st? Um, <clears throat> well, that's part of the re restructuring, um, so we're going to see how, like I say, that restructuring and the negotiations go before we, um, before we move forward with any of that filling. Negotiations for, for what? Well, it, it, because it's a position that hasn't been filled, um, so there's some, there's some um, approvals from unions and whatnot that needs to be taken care of before that position um, could be filled. Does, does that position come out of the mayor's office, or are you going to get involved in that? I will be directly involved. You'll be directly involved. Now, is it a position that you need? Um, well, like I say, um, you know, it is a way within restructuring of the department that would be a huge help to, my, to, my, to the department as a whole. Absolutely. So you need the person? Correct. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome, Councilor. Any other questions, councillors, before Councillor Cruz? Thank you. Just uh, something I didn't think to ask. How did the golf course come through the winter? Um, actually, uh, pretty well, to be honest with you. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, we did have some worries with all that snow um, sitting on the greens for such an extended period of time. Um, so there were a lot of people that didn't clear their greens. Um, I got very panicky. We actually went out and rented a backhoe and cleared the greens. Um, we did do some mechanical damage, um, but by the time we opened the golf course, that was all fixed. Nobody even actually noticed it. Um, and I think our clearing of the greens was, was important because there are some courses in the area that didn't clear greens that got kind of banged up. So um, <clears throat> we actually came through really well. And I thought that parking lot would never be emptied. <laughs> Nor did I. Yeah. Um, and then is it busy? It has been. Um, you know, every year the city forecasts about what the park department as a whole will bring in. Uh, I am happy to report that as of the end of this month, we've exceeded that um, by a fairly significant amount, and we still have the month of June to go. Oh, you mean the month of uh, February out here? Yeah. <laughs> yes. And that, you okay. know, and we lost most of December because it was just so cold. Yeah. And then obviously we didn't get to open until the... 11th of April, 12th of April, so we lost half of April as well. So I, I think business at the golf course is picking up. I think our, um, our push on advertising, um, online booking um, has really um, helped generate some revenue at the golf course. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Council. Any other uh, questions or concerns, Councilors? Seeing none, we're all set with that, uh, that part. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Carpenter. And the next one, Madam Clerk. Cemetery, Timothy Carpenter, Superintendent. Good evening, Councillors. Thank you for having me. Nice to see you again. <laughs> uh, again, I would like to uh, take this time to publicly thank my employees. Um, it was a very difficult winter uh, up at the cemetery, um, but with a lot of hard work um, and some extra hours, we were able to essentially keep the cemetery open through this historic winter. Um, and it, it is, it is, um, it is really due to the hard work of those those three individuals that I have up there. And again, I would be remiss if I if I didn't mention my clerical help at the sec at the cemetery as well. Um, she does a terrific, terrific job, um, not only maintaining records um, but communicating with me. Um, and uh, I couldn't do it without her either. That I will open to questions. 
Councilor Barnes? Uh, yes, it's quite, I think a question and more of a statement. Um, I was actually going to bring a resolve forward, and I believe uh, our clerk contacted you about the issue that I had and that uh, residents had brought to me about uh, one of the particular areas in the back by the, the, the house there, the guard house there, um, and the condition that it, it has been left in uh, for a while. And I mean, this is above and beyond the, the snow and the, um, the weather. <coughs> and I guess I just want to just reiterate, you know, to you personally this time, just about um, just making sure that if you can have your staff in, in all that they do, just to make sure that that area also um, gets an extra look uh, because people are leaving just some things that are just inappropriate over there. Um, clothing and, and in the bushes and throwing their old uh, mem memorial items at the graves right in the, the uh, woods there. So um, just to make sure that I, I put that out there for you. And one question. The expansion, how does that work? How, how I've never really kind of thought about it, but uh, like I said, I've been going over there freak more frequently now and just kind of looking and seeing how does that work and, and how, who, who does that and how does that fit in with the budget? Um, <clears throat> well, a couple of years ago, we did expand. We built a new single section. Mm -hmm. um, so I expect to get another three to five years, hopefully, out of that. Okay. Um, and this past fall, we um, completed the construction of our new twos and threes expansion. Um, we are waiting for the seed to germinate so that we can get our certificate of completion, okay. Conservation Commission. <laughs> and, uh, and so once that's done, we'll open up our new th twos and three section. Um, it's a matter of finding the land okay. um, and where you can, can expand into and then developing that land. So how much further back can it go over there in that er that? Not side. much further because, uh, again, you, you get into wetland issues over there, Conservation Commission. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Council Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Carpenter, how are you? Fine, thank you. Um, just two questions uh, relative to an increase of about $19,000, um, which is other services under purchase of services, from 5400 to uh, 24000 Could you just define to us what, what that is? Uh, a large portion of that money we utilize uh, at the cemetery during the, the summer, we utilize the compensated work therapy program through the Veterans Administration. So we have three veterans up there um, doing mowing, <laughs> trimming, trying to keep up with the maintenance up there. And that other services line item is usually where that money comes from to pay those, those three individuals. So, so when we had uh, Mr. Farrell here last night, we questioned about the, the veterans and senior work off program. And uh, to my dismay, uh, we, we were informed only one veteran has been able to utilize that. Is there a potential utilization relative to what you just talked about? Either in the cemetery, the park, the golf course. Um, you know, definitely some avenues there, there's right? There's definitely some av avenues there, absolutely. Okay. That's good news. That's good news to hear, councils. Um, then my other question is kind of following up my, my, uh, my sister, uh, Councilor at Large, relative to capital projects for the expansion. Uh, it's an increase to 17,000 from 147 to 164. Again, could you just define to the council what, what that is, that increase? Well, that money actually, if you'll notice, um, the overall revised budget from 2015 to, to uh, 2016, that money, that 164, is actually a transfer from the account sales of lots and graves. So it's money that the cemetery has actually generated on its own. Um, so it's not necessarily general fund monies, um, but since we've just completed our singles and we've just completed our twos and threes, um, at this point we need to concentrate on some other infrastructure. Um, the roads up there are deteriorating quickly, um, so one of the projects that I would look to be doing is so to repave some of the roads um, around the area. Um, our leaf, I know this is sort of semi-minor, but our leaf vacuum last year, I mean, there's hundreds of huge, gorgeous oak trees up there caught on fire. Uh, so we need a new leaf vac. There are some small capital purchases um, that we'd be, we would be looking to make from that 164. Okay. And then relative to Melrose, um, the cost for graves, how does that compare to, say, Calvary? Are they pretty comparable or are we... We, we are... I can't remember what Calvary is off the top of my head, um, but we are 
equal, if not less, than just about all the surrounding cemeteries. Okay. Well, that's good. And then the last question is relative to uh, the water hookups at the cemetery so people can water their, the different flowers. Is that, is that active or has it been shut off? There are, up at the Melrose, we have two active ones. We have one that's over by the maintenance facility. Um, so that's right in front of the maintenance facility. And then there's also one uh, at the cemetery office, okay. which is on the other side of the cemetery. So there's, there's two. There are two working ones. Okay, that's good. In terms of the ones out in the field, the piping through there has is so old over years, that yeah. um, if we turned them on, we, we would just have a flood. But so we do we have two working. Two sources. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Thanks again for all you do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Councillor okay. Cruz. Thank you. Um, how much does the cemetery bring in in a year? Do you know? Um, off the top of my head, I, I couldn't get that figure, but I can give it to you. I mean, I can get it to you tomorrow. If you could send that to us. Yep. Uh, I just, uh, I don't know if Jay knows, about 200, so uh, about a third of the budget is, uh, is actually offset by, by income at the cemetery. And uh, my other question, the cemetery board now is full. We, I know we had trouble a couple we years have, ago. We have five members right now. It is technically a board of six plus the mayor. Technically about a six plus the mayor. Correct. And we had to make some changes, didn't we, to the ordinances, or did they conflict with state law on who could serve on that board? Or? There, in years and when the board was convened before I, I yeah. took this position, there were um, members that of the board who were funeral directors, um, and I believe there were funeral directors contacted uh, to be on that board, and it is their position that that's a conflict of interest. So I don't believe it's a state law. I believe it comes from the funeral directors that there would be a conflict of interest um, through their association. Okay. Thank you. But you do have a full board now and they meet yes. on a whatever yep. regular basis? Relatively, yep. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome, Councilor. Any other uh, questions uh, in regards to the uh, cemetery for Mr. Carpenter? Just one comment from, uh, from my very, very good job with uh, Melrose Cemetery uh, this year. I was very uh, pleased when I was uh, there to do what I had to do, and uh, job well done. So pass it on to your, your people, please. Thank, Thank you. you. Anything else, counselors? Seeing none, we'll go to the next one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. <coughs> Public property. James Kasiri, superintendent. <clears throat> Poor substitution for an Irishman to stand in for an Italian on Republic of Italy Day, but unfortunately is stuck with an Irishman. As you all always know, a good uh, thing, Mr. Connor. It's always a good <laughs> thing. <laughs> As you all know, Jim Kassiri is ill at the moment, so he's not able to uh, Thank uh, you, Mr. participate, and I try to answer whatever questions you have uh, for his budget. There aren't any layoffs in this budget, but there are some positions that are unfilled, and uh, the, as a result of that, there. Uh, staff is going to remain as it is now, and uh, most of the budget requests and ordinary maintenance were filled as requested, except there was a small cut made to building supplies. Yes, Any uh, questions, councillors? Councillor Stewart. Uh, a general question, and it may, um, <coughs> may not only be solely about this department, but uh, questions about uh, staff advancement. So every year I, I look at a particular uh, position in the budget and have questions about um, compensation or trends and et cetera. So there are some people, for example, in this budget who, and I know some of these folks personally, and I don't, I, I don't quite know their work history, but for example, there's a person who has worked, um, you know, 31 years uh, at, at, for the city, it looks like, and they're compensated at $51,000. And there are others who've worked significantly less but seem to be in similar positions, um, making fairly close. So uh, how is that all, like, I'm just not understanding how pay raises are given or advancement is made and how do we retain people if someone's been here for 31 years versus someone for 10 making about the same amount of money? Well, uh, the, the titles would have to be different. I'm not sure specifically which exact positions you're referring to, counselor, but the Can way- I refer to them? So on, on the new, um, this is left on our desk, so I'm not sure if we're looking at the same version, but it's the public property personnel services budget. So number, I'm just looking at number, for example, number 10 and number 11. Uh, the difference there um, isn't a question of seniority, it's a question of the title. 
uh, and these positions are compensated according to title and the titles that have higher compensation are judged to have higher responsibility. Within each title there's a salary structure and there's normally a series of steps that are a part of that salary structure. At some point you max out on those steps but it's a, uh, in all of these budgets, a bargained position with an agreed to salary with, an, with a compensation level within a range of seniority for that particular responsibility and if there is another person who has more years of seniority but is being paid less money, it is because they're in a different title. I see. And then is there, are there opportunities for individuals looking at 10 and 11, for example? So opportunities for people to move outside of a particular title to do it? I mean, just, it just seems, it, yes. just, it struck me as just curious that looking at the number of years of service and the pay that there's a huge disparity here not understanding how this works. Yes, and it, again, the, the difference would have to be that one person who perhaps has many more years of senior of service than another person but is making less money is making less money because they're in a different title and the title that they're occupying pays less <coughs> than the one that uh, is occupied by a person with junior service mm -hmm. but earning more. So the, the answer to your question with respect to advancement is that if a person is in a particular bargaining unit, now these uh, people in the public property budget <coughs> represent probably three or four different bargaining units. Uh, there's a clerk's unit, which is the majority of the, of the uh, clerical functions, but not all. Uh, yeah, actually it is all. But they, so there are, looks like one, two, looks like there are four clerks in that budget. The most senior clerk's position is a title called head administrative clerk that's in the clerical union and the most junior is a senior clerk also in the clerical union. So if a position opens up within that union, within that office, those people who are also in that union who desire that position would have an opportunity to get it. Uh, it's, and it also would apply across the city to other people who are in the clerical union who might be interested in that title. So, and, and then I'll, I think this it makes sense to me. So the, this title for number 10, for example, that's the highest, I guess, level in that line of work then? In that, in that union, in that department, it's the highest title. That particular title, head administrative clerk, if it isn't the highest level of compensation in that union, it is one of the highest. There are a couple of others that are close, and I forget which is higher. There's an executive secretary, specialized secretary in this title. They're all pretty close in terms of compensation. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Welcome, Councilor. Councilor DiNapoli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Conan, good evening. Good evening. Uh, just uh, two things on the, on the list here. I see under uh, item number uh, 585007, they want to purchase a new vehicle. Is that correct for 52000 change? Is that a new, that's a new truck? No, uh, that's a prior year's funding. That's a, what is it? That's a prior year's allocation of capital. There isn't capital for this year. If you notice 2016, he asked for it. He isn't getting it. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yes. Beside it is a zero. Yeah, beside, <laughs> it, beside it in bold is, is the dreaded zero. Yeah. <laughs> well, too much vino <laughs> today celebrating. Uh, I, will, I will say, Council, there are a number of these uh, vehicle requests especially. Uh, Councilor Cruz had a question last night about the police department with $320,000. When the fire department comes up, you're going to see there's requests for a number of vehicles in that department. They're especially uh, costly. We made a determination, the mayor and I, that we weren't able to ac accommodate all of those requests within the budget. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is to consolidate them, try to make some kind of a priority list out of them, but I have a sense that most, if not all, will be coming to you as a request for a borrowing authorization later this summer to be paid on uh, bond over time because we've reached a point where a number of these uh, decisions simply can't be delayed. Uh, the fire ladder truck I know for sure is one. I know Larry Raleigh has some in his highway department that need to be replaced pretty badly. And the police cruises are another area we absolutely have to look at. <coughs> Whether this particular $52,186 item will make the cut or not, I don't know. Right, so, so you can, okay, so we, we lost the 52, but you're going to come back for about a million and a half. More than that if we're talking <laughs> about ladder trucks and uh, yeah, several, okay, million, okay. several million dollars. All right, yeah. uh, the, the other item here on the public property, uh, goods and supplies, uh, it went. F it was cut like twenty twenty thousand dollars. What? No good. Do they they take care of the building maintenance for throughout the city, right? Yep. 
Yeah, that is that part of that? Yeah, yeah that is. Uh, that particular cut was a cut based upon the rate of spending over the last several years, and we were looking to bring this budget in balance without using the full levy, as you know. And um, uh, as a result of that, there were places that had to get <coughs> squeezed on their budget request. And when we made the decision to, to make reductions in this, in this budget and other general fund budgets, it was based on an examination <coughs> of how much money have they spent this year and last year against their budgets and the thought that perhaps they'd probably be okay if we made the cut. Okay, because I know the year before it was way down and it took a big hike. Yes. So now it's down a few bucks. Yes. All right, thank you, Mr. Condon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome, Councillor. Councillors, uh, any other questions from Mr. Condon? Mr. Chairman. Councillor Sullivan. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Condon, good evening. Yes. Um, just a quick uh, clarification on the... Uh, Full time, it went from uh, 1.36 million to 1.477 million, so about 110 grand increase. Could you, Jay, just explain to us what, what that's about? I'll have to look at that, Councillor. I thought that his budget request actually for full, for, uh, full time was reduced. Um, Uh, this, you're looking from last year to yeah, his, it was I, yes, to 2015. Right. Yeah, yes. not not department request. May, mayor's recommended 2016 to revise budget last year. Yes, the revised budget is for less. Uh, I think there were some positions filled this year. Were there not? Was there an inspector hired? I think yeah, there was, was an inspector like hired this ago, year. Yep, uh, yep. And then the budget request he made was for filling additional positions, and we didn't grant those. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great. All set, Councilor. Any other uh, any other questions? Seeing none, thank you, Mr. Carter. We're, We're done with that, uh, with that piece. Madam Clerk. War Memorial, James Kassiri, Superintendent. <laughs> you got it again, Jay. Well, at least a better standing. I am a veteran, so I should be able to handle up War Memorial. That's an easy one. <laughs> Any... Uh, any questions for Mr. Condon in regards to the War Memorial Building? I will say I think this uh, this budget is represented now by a more active uh, uh, Board of Trustees and has been in the past, and I think that's exactly. a good thing for the city. Mr. Chairman. Councilor Cruz. Um, are we bringing in any money? I think the Mayor is intending to, yes. Th At that's this point, not really to speak of. But now that that board is active, we expect I, to. I, I would, I would think so, yes, because we know it's, it's, it's a beautiful facility and it's, <coughs> it's, it's able to be used for a variety of purposes other than just the, the few that it's used for. And I would hope so. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome, Councilor, Councilor Bounds. Um, just to, to piggyback on what uh, Councilor Cruz said, there have been events there all year, right? yes. at least you know since um, March of last year. So surely those people that rented the place would have generated revenue, right? Yes, the revenue doesn't show in this budget. Okay, I don't. I still think I don't understand that. Why? Well, you're looking. What's in front of you is an expenditure budget. Okay. 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 So, so the revenues are, are are shown elsewhere. The revenues for the city are either estimated or they're revolving funds or they're cash in hand. And so in this case, um, I don't think that uh, I'm not sure if the clerk knows. Is there a war memorial revolving fund? Do you know off the top of your head? I don't think there is. Is there? I'm sorry, Jay, can you ask Re Is the revolving fund for the War Memorial Building? Do you remember if there's one there for is them? A there is one, one about $10,000 maybe or something like that. I don't think it's it that receives, high right It now. receives the rentals and it pays for costs associated with the evenings when the people are using the building. So that will be coming before you for the Finance Committee Council. Okay, all right, thank you. This point of information, yep. just on that, Councilor. since my wife is on the board. They're fi they are finalizing all their rules and regulations and what they're going to be doing. Uh, they've had it to go to the Law Department and they'll probably be getting that back next uh, meeting and then they'll be going over all the how they're going to run events and things like that so okay. that'll be coming up next year okay this year i mean okay thank great you. thank you all set council yes thank you Mr. Chairman. any other uh questions council yeah, Sullivan? it's not about the budget i just wanted to explain again to the council um lou tarantino who uh world war ii uh veteran hero uh who uh was captive and was prisoner of war for years escaped got captured again uh, there used to be a park on Otis Street named after Mr. Tarantino in his honor. No longer exists. The, uh, the stone was actually brought up near uh, D.W. Fields Park. I spoke to Mr. Tarantino. He's up in his 90s now. And he's really hoping in his lifetime that that stone would be uh, moved to the War Memorial. So uh, I just wanted you guys to know that because I think, uh, Louis, he really deserves that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any other, uh, no other comments? We're all set then. Thank you, Mr. Condon. Appreciate it. Thank you. Madam Clerk? Parking Authority, Robert Malley, Executive Director. Hey, 
Good evening, Councilors. Good evening, sir. How are you? Good. How are you? Anything you want to uh, say? Uh, yeah, well, right ahead. Yeah, uh, I'd like to start by saying, um, <laughs> as, you, prob as pro you probably know, uh, the Park Authority budget is paid for from our reserve funds and not from the general fund. Uh, it's entirely financed by the reserve funds. Uh, it's the budget that's been presented to you is level funded with a couple of exceptions. Um, we are looking for an, another supervisor. Um, our hours that we're open are 6 in the morning to 9 at night, Monday to Friday, and have just one supervisor. Obviously, 75 hours for one supervisor is, uh, is uh, a glaring hole in the... Uh, and would like to address that. And the other item that is... Uh, uh, a little bit higher this year. We had a small increase in overtime, uh, and that is due to the increase in workload. We had more uh, yep. properties coming on. Uh, we're intending to open the Trinity property in July. Uh, that will increase the number of patrons we have. Um, and then we're going to take over the South, uh, South Street parking lot uh, later on this summer. Um, the revenues have grown uh, just on the our collection side, excluding uh, enforcement, which is not in this budget, um, excluding the enforcement, have grown from 558,000 to 778,000 in the last five years. So that shows you how many more customers we have. So, mm -hmm. so that's what we'll be looking for. I don't take any questions. Questions, uh, Councilors? Uh, Councilor Cruz. Yeah, not so much a question, but I want to congratulate you on your sixth anniversary at the <laughs> Parking Authority. <laughs> Thank um, you. You've done a great job there, and uh, again, it's, uh, what kind of shapes the garage in now? The stairs are all done? Yes, all done. And uh, anything else you see major needs to be done soon over there? Or? Uh, in the garage, no. Well, you know, we could probably use some uh, electrical work, right, lighting. Uh, we're looking into that. Great. Well, thank you. You do a great job over there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillors, any other? Sullivan. Mr. Malley, a few weeks ago, uh, our colleague, State Rep, uh, City Council Dubois, mentioned that she heard a rumor about Perkins Park being uh, transformed into a parking garage. Is there any validity to that at all? <laughs> no. None, right? No. 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 The, <laughs> she comes nothing has been discussed. Okay. As you know, we have a parking study coming up, yep. right, which will identify the um, locations if and when we need to build a garage. Right, but no, no. Well, you couldn't put one no, there anyhow. No locations have been discussed. No, not just Perkins Park. No other yeah, place. I either. mean, that's a dedicated park, so you couldn't get a right. parking yeah, garage no, there anyhow. Okay, thank it's you. Not, has not crossed our mind okay. at all. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Point uh, of information uh, on that: uh, that would take an act of the legislature to take any park land. So I don't see that happening. No. Thank you. You oh, could okay. point of information: you could not take even a home rule petition wouldn't allow you to take no. a dedicated park. No, we'll take. because oh, it's dedicated to the GIR, the Civil War. You couldn't do it. Thank well, you. I'm glad we weren't planning it then. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we've diffused the, the rumor. The rumor is diffused. Oh, that one. Well, however, yeah. Council of Hans. Yes, just one thing. If you could just, um, I guess, just educate me a little bit more about the plan or any kind of future plans to expand the meters, uh, maybe down Main Street or, or as we start to develop a little bit more and some of that. Yeah. My own personal opinion is that that should happen. However, I'm waiting with an open mind to see what comes in from the parking study right, and the recommendations of or the consultants that we're hiring. Okay. Um, proposals came in last week. Uh, we have a committee set up. It's myself, Rob May, and uh, Charlie Hickey right, to review the proposals. We're almost done reviewing them. We still have to check references. Then we'll be meeting le next week to uh, pick a vendor for that. I think it would be a good idea to bring them down North you're Main looking Street. At, you're looking at six months uh, elapsed time between the beginning of the parking study and the end of the parking study. Okay. Council Stewart asked me for a copy of the scope of the study, if you wish, and uh, received it and, it was and read it. Point information is very well done. Right. And um, if you'd like me to send you a copy of the scope of the study, I'd be happy to do that. That would be great. I'd love to see that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Good. Any other questions, uh, Mr. Malley? Seeing none, we're all set. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Madam Clerk. DPW, Engineering, Howard Newton, Superintendent. <coughs> I made an executive decision, so I moved you around and we're 
with having you because everything else it. is going to be with the DPW commissioner. So he's going to be in front of us for the next five hours. So <laughs> I, I appreciate that, especially since I was on vacation. And, and since you're the elder statesman of this building. Yeah. I think I'm almost as old as oh. the building is the way I, I feel. <laughs> good evening, Mr. Newton. How are good, you? Good evening. Uh, I really don't have a statement. I would like to... Uh, express my thanks to the, to the employees in my department. As you may not be aware, over the last several years, we've lost approximately 60 percent of our staff. Uh, with Jack Borges retirement uh, earlier this year, in January, it's really put a lot of pressure on us. And uh, those two guys, the two guys that I have working for me, uh, just have gone over and above anything you could possibly ask. They've been great. With that, I'll take some questions. Mr. Chairman. Council Cruz. Thank you. First of all, what number is this? Thirty and a half. The first one, I wasn't really sure of myself, so I had help. <laughs> so this is your thirty-first budget, we'll say. Thirty-first budget. Now, that's almost not thirty-first year. Thirty-first budget. <laughs> Who was the mayor of the first one? We didn't have a mayor then. It was well, with the mayor of the first budget. God, I can't remember that. But when I came here, we had a city manager. Mr. Gilday. It was Mr. Mr. Gilday. That's right. Mr. Gilday. Yep. Um, actually, the only question I really do have is, with Jack retiring, uh, are there, there are times you need the engineer's stamp, or is that going to be... Not since I've been here. Not since you've been here. Uh, I mean, in the ordinance, it calls for an engineer, don't we? Uh, o only if that person holds the title city engineer. That's okay. the only time that's required. So it ha it, you don't expect it to come up that we don't have a, a stamped engineer on the... No. Okay. We right. have added, uh, you know, the city has consultants that we use constantly, water, sewer. Uh, Camp Dresser and McKee have been our consultants for years. They have, they have myriad of, uh, of registered professional engineers and land surveyors on board. Okay. Thank you. That's all I need. Council. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor DiNapoli. Good evening, Mr. Newton. Good evening. You have double the time that I have here. That's not bad, huh? With two, that's all I've that's got all. for you. That's right. <laughs> 16 and 32, that's not bad. A, a question on the, uh, when we had the water break, I guess, you know, you deal with the, the maps, and, and I guess you know where some of them. Some, the, yes, but the water department has most of, them, they, so most like, of their you, own. You wouldn't have any of that. Without a lot of research, I couldn't tell you. We do have plans that go back to the late 1800s and early 1900s uh, as far as upgrades and things like that. I do have plans. Uh, I don't think uh, I'd let Larry discuss that, but uh, I don't think it's a matter of that we didn't have plans of where these valves and things are from. And I only know what I read in the newspaper. Okay. Uh, it's just a matter of how you find the relating those plans to the ground is sometimes very difficult, especially if things become overgrown and things of that nature. Okay. Do we uh, do we have any any monies to uh, to uh, recognize uh, some of the streets that are not public streets? Yes, we, we, we do. do have some I think we put uh, the mayor allowed seven thousand dollars in the budget, and that was in anticipation. After several councils have talked to me, they do have streets that they want to have accepted. Some of those streets require surveys, and that's what that money is used for. Okay, that, that's that's some good news. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Council. Chairman. Thank you. Any other? Uh, just point of information so I understand Stewart. the history here. So I have here that you've been with the city for 56 years, but you've been in that role for 32 years? What's the difference? I've been in this position since 1984. And with the city since? Since 1959. Got it. All right, thank you. <laughs> you have to make me do that publicly and let people know. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that nice? <laughs> Councilor Dubois? Hi, Mr. Newton. How are you? Well, thank you. So 1959. That's that was before around. I was born. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. That's what you started here? That's amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for the help you've given me over the years um, with the roads and the streets, and there's so many still that we need to work on. So I appreciate your candor and your honesty and um, your openness about things we can do and things we can't do. So thank you very much. Quite, quite welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council. Any other questions for Mr. Newton? See you then. Thank you, Mr. Newton. Appreciate it as always. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk. DPW Commissioner Larry Raleigh, Commissioner. Good evening, Good evening um, Mr. Everybody. Commissioner. I know this is your first, uh, your first budget, and Councilors, um, just keep in mind that he's going to be here to answer all other departments with him, within him and not 
where we've had other people that have been in these positions, he, he is pretty much it. So um, he's going to be doing, uh, doing the best to give us uh, Rojo, answers it. and concerns. So, <laughs> and I'm sure he'll do a fine, 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 fine job. So let's stay within the confines of his, um, his budget so that um, you know, we're not deviating away from it. So that being said, um, if you have anything you want to say, Commissioner, first. Uh, I, I do on the um, administration. My, my budget as a DPW commissioner is uh, it's mostly level funded, but if you go to the personnel services, you're going to see that we do have a director of operations that's going to be in this budget now. That's, that's going, I'm finally getting some help. He is going to work just under me, but we've only funded it for six months um, because by the time we advertise and get it all together, we figure it'll probably be the 1st of January before we can hire. Um, in the meantime, so I can take a day off or a vacation, we did have we we did hire back um, Craig Young. It says consultant of operations. It's really not. He is um, an interim director of operations that is going to be able to help me. He can only work 960 hours a calendar year, so that's approximately 18 hours a week. Um, like I'm going to try to use him more in the winter time because. If we have a winter next year like we had this winter, I thank God I don't have any hair. That's all I got to say. <laughs> I haven't had the best of luck since I've taken over as a commissioner, as you can see. <laughs> so um, with that, I'll answer any questions. Thank you very much. Councilor Dubois. Hi, um, Commissioner uh, Rowley. How are you? I'm fine, Council. How are you liking your job? <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. Good. It's very, it's stressful. Like oh, I yeah. said, I've, I haven't had a good track. I mean, the way the winter went and with these two main leaks that I had, I had a main leak like I just experienced last week. I had one the second week of January up on North Main Street. Hmm. So, um, well, that, good job there. You answered your phone, you answered questions, you were open and honest with the information, and that you really can't ask for more um, from someone in your position. So I appreciated well, that. Well, thank you. And I'd like to thank everybody here also with your concerns and your support with the phone calls that I received from you and your emails or texts. That it, it, it meant a lot because it, it, it's just not about me. I have a great staff right. from the clerks all the way down. They did a great job. Not only them, the fire department, the police department. It, it, it seems like when the city has a crisis like this, we all pull together as a department and we worked well together. Mm. It, it just, I was, I was just, um, I don't know the word We're I'm looking for, but I was just overjoyed by mm. your support and everybody else's support that we just got last week. And we did everything we could to get that water back on. We had it fixed, we had it shut off, fixed, and repaired water flowing back into the city within 19 hours. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that we did a great job, and my staff did an excellent job under you the did. circumstances. You did. I'm sure we're going to talk a lot more about that when we get to the water and sewer part, right? For sure. We, we can if you want. <laughs> I'm sure we will. <laughs> so wh when was the last DPW oh, commissioner that had a director of operations? We never had that position. This is a new position Great. that was negotiated with the unions. So with this position, we, we are going to eliminate the utility superintendent and the operations superintendent. And this director of operations will do like the superintendents did. And what will happen to the people in those positions? What position is that? In the um, utility superintendent and operations. That, that's me right now. I'm okay. like a hybrid kind of commissioner, I believe. Great. I'm wearing three different hats, so. And then the operations superintendent will have. He's he's retired. Okay, So great. we're not so going to replace him. So all we're going to replace, like I said, the superintendent of operations, superintendent of utilities, with the director of operations. Perfect, perfect. And are you going to be looking to hire from within, or is there? A uh, we're going to put it out there, counselor, and we'll, and we'll just see where it goes from there. All right, thank you. We thank are going to advertise the job on the outside. We have to advertise it on the inside first. Sure. I believe it's in the eight. The Triple Eight Union, correct? That's where he's going to. Excuse me. Department, Department Heads Union. Yeah, that's a, the trip. I call it Triple Eight Union. <clears throat> yes, we have to advertise it there first, and then if, if we don't get a, a candidate that we like, we'll, we're definitely going to go outside. Well, I hope you can find someone from within. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I do, and I do too. Thank Council you. Council Stewart. <laughs> uh, Mr. Uh, Chairperson, uh, Mr. Rowley, so I, I just wanted to publicly. Thank you and your team for the work you've done on that water main uh, rupture. And I had 
actually requested that we uh, you bring with you those workers I, who I did counselor do you want that now or do you want it later I was hoping they would, they would be here presently like in person because I I think that was such a well that would be impossible because yeah. they're out working <laughs> some of them are out working and some of them are just they, they're, they're beat up and they're tired and I don't think I could get them here I, see. I did uh, pass on what you what you said in in and all the other councils and, and they said thank you that's great Yes, I and I thank you for that. Those are nice, kind words that you, you sent me. Sure. Um, so is it worth, and this is not directly related to the budget, but I just think it's worth understanding um, how you guys went about, what, what was involved in repairing the, the water main? Because I it, can only it, imagine. Yeah, it wasn't so much the repair, so to speak. It was, and, and we do this all the time when we have a big leak like this. It's the shutdown. Because without a shutdown, we can't repair it. Some, in some cases, we do under pressure, but you cannot do this with a transmission main with 105 psi coming at you. So we had to shut it down. That's what took a little bit of time to re make the repair. It took us an hour and a half. So once we did that, then we had to fill the main slow. So I didn't rupture any mains up here in Brockton. We had to get all the air out. We had to purge it. So with that being said, we turned it on. I think we started feeding it just gravity around 12.30. 1.30 we told um, Silver Lake to start pumping water. So with that, we filled in. We came back to Brockton about 4 a.m. And I had all my guys, plus I had the fire department on the outskirts of the Brockton, especially where it's the high part. And we were pulling a lot of hydrants and we got a lot of air out that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, that's, that's what it was. So we, we turned the whole thing around flushing and everything in a 24-hour period. And then who, who were the individuals involved? Excuse me? So who were the uh, individuals involved directly? Do you have their... I had a, I, I, it, was, it was all my utilities, water, sewer, but I did have the highway department, because we, we were all out of the city, I did have the highway department operations backing up any calls in the city here, but I also had a lot of help from East Bridgewater. Um, the superintendent there was great. The East Bridgewater Fire Department, was great. They brought us a tent. They brought us water. Um, there was a lot involved. And, and, and I, I have to mention my clerks in DPW, and I also have to mention the mayor's office and the mayor. They did all the notifications that had to be done back here. He let me, he, he took, the mayor and his staff took care of everything that had to be done here. I took care of the leak. That's great. So, it was, like I, I said, it was a great team effort, and we got through it. Um, could it happen again? <laughs> yes, it can. Right, certainly. So, well, just so you know, too, I um, posted updates on my uh, Facebook page, and I think I have about 5,000 um, followers in Brockton, and got a lot of great comments. And one that struck me was one resident who said that she was very proud of how the city handled this crisis and that she was very <coughs> proud to, to, to live in Brockton. So I think that just speaks volume to the work that your team well, well, thank um, you. Put together, and also the mayor's office and others who kept the communication flowing. So, and, just thank and you I'm, again. And I'm very proud of just the way the city came together and everybody was reaching out to help. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you, uh, Council. I gave you some lead way. Yes. I really did. It's, okay. It's a crisis. I, I, do a want, I do want to say, <laughs> I do want to say to the to the budget, we we uh, we realized Chairman. the crisis we, that we had, and they did a good job. Yes, Council. Thank please, you. Before I go, I'll talk about the break under the water department. But I do in the beginning in your intro to this particular budget, you talk about some of the street fixings that you'll be undertaking, and there's a whole list, and there's many things that we can talk about. But I hate to hammer the same one that I'm always asking you about. Where are we with the state on West Elm Street? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Because <laughs> I, I had uh, State Rep Brady chase this down for me because I was getting nowhere with the state people. Um, June 10th, the, the letter to award is going out. June 30th is the start date, but there'll be so, so, so many submittals coming in and out. They're looking at to start construction late July or the 1st of August. And I believe he said it's a 600-day project, so you're looking at a couple-year project to get it done. Have you talked to them? Well, you probably haven't because they haven't been getting back to you, but I know you've, you're going to ask them to skim coat that and I'm, not I'm leave gonna, it. I'm going to ask them, yes, I'm especially to get us through this winter. We can't go through another winter with that, the street the way You won't is. be able to plow it. We just, it's, it's impossible. Um, I'm going to ask them to do, if they could just do a grind and overlay like they did on Pleasant Street. Yeah. 
and then they can do they can dig whatever they have to do and move whatever they have to move and patch it whatever they have to do I am going to ask them to do that at the pre-construction meeting um, and I believe I'm going to bring the mayor with me on that meeting so maybe we can get this done it's just uh, you know and it's I did, not a ward one issue it's a city issue it is just so bad we all know what I know but and, and I did ask about um, Belmont Street also because that's another one that they have to terminate the contract they have now with the contractor they have to reissue or rebid the contract for night work so I don't think we're going to see much movement on that probably until next year until next year but uh, that's not in bad shape as West Elm. right at least you can drive down there it needs yes, yes. It, it can be dangerous because of the width and the speeds but <laughs> but uh, you can barely drive down West Elm Street yeah, West Elm and we've been like hitting all those skimmers with some hot top but it's just it's 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 a mess it's a mess I, I agree it's a mess thank you thank you mr. chairman you're welcome council Councilor Dinapoli. thank you mr. Welcome. chairman mr. Raleigh you're doing a, an outstanding job uh, thank I, you. I don't know how you do your job but you know you the communication through me and through my fellow counselors has been out we, we never received the communications from any department head like we have with you and uh, kudos to you and uh, it's, thank you it's, it's not easy and uh, like my fellow counselor just said that uh, road construction we were talking we're not talking about water we're talking about roads everybody in the city is calling us to fix the roads fix the roads <coughs> but we only have so much money to do with it correct and uh, th just to, not to be repetitive at the last council meeting when we received all the grant money in the chapter 90 money how much money do we have to do road construction this year? We have about $2 million. Pardon me? $2 million. $2 million. Yes. Doesn't go very far. No, it doesn't, Council. No. No. I mean, you're hearing it live, folks. $2 million no. does not go far. No. But, uh, you know, we do the best we can. Um, we are, and I'm still waiting for some of your requests that I sent out. I mean, I've got most of yours, but um, I was going to start last week trying to put a list together and then go down and talk to the mayor about it, but... Yeah. Last week was I, a you know, last week was a disaster. So no, no, I I, I was going to call because so. some of the streets that, that you did I, call. Yes, I, you did. I did, but some of the streets that I want redone need water, sewer. So yes. we we can't yes. do certain streets. But uh, I will talk to uh, Sharon tomorrow morning and give her a couple that okay. don't need water and sewer. I hope. Yep. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And Mr. Raleigh, thank, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councilors, Councilor Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Larry. Good I evening, Councilor. I Council. just want to echo the sentiments. The phenomenal job for you and everybody. And, and you summed it up. Everybody worked together as a team. Yes. And that's awesome. Awesome. And, and I do, I said it before and you were before us. I mean, you, you are wonderful getting back to anything that I request so quickly. And I truly appreciate it. It's very professional. And thank you so much for that. I support your Director of Operations 100%. And the only question I have is, is why did you only uh, fund it for six months? Why not go for the full year and bump it up a to 100? Well, Council, we figured that by the time we get this posted and just through all the paperwork and everything, it was going to be January it's before. Be January 16th. Yeah, so instead of funding and wasting money, yep. we, we, you know, Jay put that money somewhere else. So he asked me if I'd be all right anyway until January, and I said, yeah, I've, I've gone this so you're, you're, so That's what I was going to ask. You. You're okay. I, I'm okay now that I have Mr. Young on board Young. with me so I can take a day off, no worry, I'll go on vacation and not have to worry about getting back. You know, you've, you've called, you've emailed me, texted me on vacation, I got right back to you on vacation Absolutely. too. So, Absolutely. Um, I, I just, um, it, it'll be nice to have Craig just back me up on a, on a few, th you know, he's doing a lot of the little things for me. I know he is. I just I saw him can't. recently. He's doing a great job. And, yeah. and that Thank was my you. only question. I, I think it's a brilliant idea. It's, it's something that's appropriate structure-wise. Uh, I mean, again, it's an operational uh, management standpoint, so it's great. Yes. And I just want to make sure you're good to go. But you are for January, so. I'm fine. All right. I'm awesome. fine. Thank, thank you, Larry. And thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Raleigh at this particular point for this item? Seeing none. Madam Clerk, we'll move to the next. DPW Refuge, Larry Raleigh, Commissioner. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening again. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think you just, it, I don't have much of a statement. This is a budget. It's pretty level funded, except for, again, in the personal services that we're looking to hire 
four more maintenance people so we can um, we can do refuse work what what, what the, the the target is on this is we want to start picking up trash at, at the parks at the ball fields at D-Dub and let the park department worry about the ball fields cutting lawns I think so this is why and this is th and this is this was brought up by the mayor that this is what we like to do let the refuse people do refuse work and let the park people do their park work and with the parks will be a lot cleaner and hopefully the grass will be cut ball fields will be in good shape very good does any questions no questions we'll move to the next uh, we'll move to the next one madam clerk thank you DPW Highway, Larry Rowley, Commissioner. Good evening. Good evening again. <laughs> <laughs> um, highways, it's almost a, highway is almost the same budget as last year. Pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. It's, it's, uh, it's not many, not many changes at all except you'll see the superintendent of operations is vacant it's unfunded and personal and I already went through that so if there's any questions questions councils in regards to uh, that particular one seeing none we'll move to the next one madam clerk DPW maintenance Larry Rowley commissioner same with that council is it's level funded from the last couple of years nothing has changed just a question I mean you have uh, you, I saw you requested vehicles uh, how bad are the ones you you're working with we, we do have some bad um, it's the salt trucks what we're looking for is I do have the the spreader unit itself but I need something to put it on and the chassis are all rotten out on I think they're like 2000 2002 trucks and you know constantly having salt on them it just rots them out so that's what I was looking for uh, I mean we need those obviously we, we definitely you know, we definitely need at least you know, four anyway mr. Conan talked about you know that we'll be making a yes making a list but uh, you know some of those trucks from a five don't look too bad and when people get up close there they're, they're in they're, pretty tough shape they're being dated together yeah thank you thank you mr. Thank you, uh, any other questions on this particular one, councils? <coughs> Seeing none, we'll move to the next one, uh, Madam Clerk. DPW Renewable Energy, Larry Rowley, Commissioner. Council, the same with this budget. This is you've seen this year after year after year. Um, really. It's nothing has changed on this. Also, Council Dubois. Um, so. What is your role in managing this budget, this project? What, what do you do with this? I get, I, or your staff? We just oversee this, Councillor. Um, we do have a management company called um, Solon that pretty much manages it. This is an enterprise account. Um, there's not much to say about it. It's, it's there. I mean, we, we, if there's anything that has to be done as far as weeds or anything like that we hire a contractor um, and how much do we pay for the um, for the management um, $28,870 20, $28,000 a year yes and yes. so so say if we look at what we made in 2014 which is hundred and twenty thousand seven hundred and thirty six dollars in this budget book does, yes does that include the 28 or do we minus the 28 from that like what's is that the is that the it's, it's included inclu it's okay, included I'm sorry I it's just, included and are we surprised at this amount was there ever an expectation that we'd be making more money than this no I think when it was built counselor that it, it this was a it was going to be and I'm not I can't say I'm an expert on this but it was built for 425 kw's of power and it was supposed to average about 131 in, in, in annual income, and I, I believe we're we're right around yeah we're right around the 131 that it's producing. Great. And so, do we have any um, interest in potentially expanding <coughs> our solar bright fields? I have 
a bunch of, um, you know, property I think that the city could put a solar bright field on in my ward. Yeah, I'm just there wondering, is, is maybe there any interest in that? There, there is a lot of interest in it. There's a lot of interest on, the, on as, as Councilor Stadinsky knows, there is some interest at the, um, the Thatcher Street landfill. Great, because uh, I've... That's being, I think it's being negotiated now, Jay, do you know where... Yeah. Yes, I know about that. Yeah, they were in front of you anyway. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there I've is been approached by private um, industry that wants to put solar bright fields in Ward 6. And most recently, there's a proposal that's going to be, for, be before the Zoning Board of, of Appeals on June 9th at 7 p.m., where a private developer wants to come in and put in a whole bunch of solar panels in a residentially zoned area off of North Quincy Street. So I guess not all solar projects are the same. Like the one that, the one that Brockton manages is excellent because we took a piece of land that was kind of derelict and we're putting it to good use, creating renewable energy but they're not all equal yeah uh, no I appreciate your time thank you very much thank You're you welcome. Mr. Chairman thank you Councillor any other uh, questions in regards to this one uh, Councillors <coughs> seeing none we'll move to the uh, next one Madam Clerk DPW SOAR Larry Rowley Commissioner Councillors um, other than a little increase in overtime in this budget um, it's all level funded the reason why the increase in overtime is because of um, we're doing a lot more repair work now and it's taking a lot longer. Mr. Chairman. Do well. um, are you overall all your budgets, but specific to this one, do you have any layoffs? Not in the sewer, no. And any of your departments? Yes, you water. Water has layoffs. Water, we have one. One, okay. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Councilor. Councilors, any other pertaining to um, sewer? Seeing, seeing none, we'll move to uh, Water Department. DPW Water, Larry Rowley, Commissioner. Well, Councilors, um, <laughs> this, this budget is, is not level funded, it's underfunded. Uh, let me explain. With overtime I requested 475 which I have received the last two or three budgets it was cut to 288 731 which is a difference of 186 269 with that with that being said or done I'm not going to be able to be able to 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 do the flushing program for one to flush all these hydrants in the city it's a three nights it costs fifty five thousand dollars um, I'm not going to be able to repair all the leaks. I mean, I'm going to have to juggle. I'm going to have to let some go. Um, I'm going to try not to do it in the wintertime because of public safety and icing, but I am not going to be able to operate this department with 288.73 in overtime. I've also been cut in my pipes and fittings. Um, pipes and fittings and hydrants. I mean, hydrants are, are 17, 1800 dollars a piece right now. We had 16 to 20 of them knocked off this winter. So do the math. Also pipes and fittings, the job I just did, some rough figures is just the couplings I had to buy, those were $2,000 a piece. So with, the, with this aging system and the repairs that have to be done, I am not going to be able to do like I have before some of this stuff is going to have to be let go. I, I'm, not, I'm not up here with a violin like some other people say, but I'm just telling you the truth that I tried because I'm very short this year on overtime and Saturday night we had a leak and the lady decided that she didn't like what we had to say. I was going to let it go. It wasn't a bad leak, water running down, but she decided to call um, State Rep Brady, and Brady said, what's going on? The lady was worried about it was flooding her cellar. It wasn't that. It was groundwater. We went and did it anyway Sunday. This is what's going to happen. Y'all going to start getting calls saying, why is this water going down my street and it's not being fixed? This is why. Because I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm going to have to pick and choose. We're going to have to do the worst leaks, and I'm going to have to let some go. Now, with that being said, DEP might step in and say, Listen, you can't do that. It's unaccounted for water. 
you're going to have to repair them. Well, what do I do? I don't know what to do. Mr. I need revenue. I need something. Council, Council Cruz, then Council Moynihan. Okay. So first of all, now that we're on this budget, I have to tell you that I've been around a long time and I've never seen as good a reaction from a, a myriad of departments as what happened last week. Um, Thank you. Your Council. people, the police, the fire, the information from the mayor's office, it was, and, I, and the residents of the city. I have to tell you that with, with what was going on, I had no complaint. I had calls in, you know, what's going on, but I had nobody who was complaining about uh, the fact that it happened. Um, I think people understand. And I will say it, it may turn out to be fortuitous to open the eyes of some people, because I will get to the question now. We're budgeting that 288. If we put through the water rate increase, will we then be able to change that number? I believe by speaking with Mr. Kahn, and he said he could probably put some money back in there for me. Yes. And I think the public now understands nobody wants to ever increase taxes or water rates or anything like that. But after what happened last week, I think the public understands that we have pipes that are 100 years old and even less in many other places, but things don't last forever. And if we don't start, um, if we don't start attacking that st those items, we could have we could have had a real tragedy that last week, couldn't we? Yes, we could have. And we it then brings me to my other he, he, point that I'd like to Not to interrupt make. you with that, but this system doesn't take a day off. This system runs 24/7. There's water constantly running. There's no holidays. There's nothing for this system. It's constantly running. I'm, no, and, I don't mean to interrupt. And water pressure, you, I, you know, I, I'm in the plumbing industry. Hmm? Water pressure is a can be a vicious thing. Yes, it can. It can do a lot of damage. Not just damage. I mean, it eventually eats away. It, it's friction constantly yes. at every turn, at every at every 90. It's eating away the system when it's doing its job. Yes. And just by the very design of the system, it needs to be taken care of. Yes. And we, uh, as an ordinance committee passed the first step of, of the increase. Um, the other point I think it's really important to make is we, uh, I think we now know, we may not be happy about the fact that we've had to pay for money out of Aquaria for all these years, but the fact that we were able to get water for Aquaria, I know I talked to the fire department and they were very, very worried about what could have happened with it if there was a major fire. Yes. Uh, it was, you know, they had pumper trucks, they had... They did. They yes. were doing, but, but a major fire that could not have kept up with. And we could have had really, really serious issues. And I just think it's time for all of us to finally say we understand and it needs to be done. And you can't band-aid. And again, like you say, you could say I, I can't fix that. The state could come in any time and say you will fix that. And then it's going to mean we have to get rid of something else to do that. And uh, the city just can't. We can't put our heads in the sand anymore and hope and pr pray that things work. It's, uh, it's a system that is uh, designed 100 years ago. Uh, you know, I heard somebody say, oh, well, how come we didn't know where, those, where the crossover was? That's 100 years ago that map is made, or 118 years ago? The, uh, was, the original? Yeah, the, the main was put in, one of them was put in 1921, and the other was, I think, 1927, something like that, Councilor. And I'm surprised that Howard didn't know where they were because he was here when they <laughs> got put in. But, uh, <laughs> he put them in. <laughs> but uh, it's He's just... probably the engineer. <laughs> you know, the, what could have happened didn't happen because of the reaction of, of your crew and, and all the departments. But uh, that could happen again tomorrow. It could. And it could happen... The other part that people don't realize, I don't understand when you were talking about bringing the system back up to pressure. When you drain a system and bring it back up to pressure, you could have, you could have split 100 joints. We, yes, we could have. And then we would have really been, been yes, in trouble. Yes, we could have. Yes. What do you think overall, not just your department, but there's police overtime, there's everything, what do you think the other day cost? You know, Council, and, and Mr. Conner wants me to get that figure. Um, to do the repair... It, it, to do the repair, it was probably less than twelve thousand dollars to do the repair. Well, you're talking about the actual, uh, but but I don't. How many people on overtime? That's what I'm still figuring out. That um, 
I don't know if we're going to have to reimburse the fire department for their overtime, police. I know one thing that we, I think I was told that I have to pay $15,000 in the bottled water. Some of it was donated, some of it we have to pay for. So I think the bottled water is going to, well, I shouldn't say that. It, it's almost going to equal to what it costs to do the pipe. But um, to, to fix the pipe, it was, it was um, $4,000 for the couplings and another $500 for the piece of pipe. But That's the minor part. <laughs> That's the minor part, correct. But all the other things, the police overtime, the fire overtime. Police the, overtime, I just got that count, so it was around $2,000 for police overtime. I mean, that's not as bad so as I'm I thought still, it might have been. I'm still putting figures together, but I, I, I can share them with you once we get everything together. You know, because what it costs your department is one thing, but what it costs the city overall correct. is is the whole number. And I, yes. w when that's done, and whether that's JOU, I would like to get that information so yeah, we, we can really... And by the way, you know, we talk about all the departments. I have to tell you, Bema did oh, a great job. They and, stepped and you know up and did a phenomenal job. That Steve Hook, he, he's the greatest. He's the greatest director going. I mean, he was there. He he's the one who helped me reach out to the MWRA. I also have to mention them. They reached out to us, and and they're the ones where we got the dresser couplings. Um, they had them in stock, all through Steve Hook in the emergency center. Um, he does a great job. We we've. I, we learned a lot this year with that emergency center through the snowstorms and blizzards that we had. Um, so a lot of this was not new to us, how we all came together, but it's, it's just amazing if you were there and you could just see everybody working together. It was just... That's great to hear. It was right? very stressful, but again, you say, geez, you know, thank God for all this help. You know, I went up to West to try to help hand out water. They had, Bema had more volunteers up there than they could use, actually. Yep, I think, oh, there were a couple here tonight, but... Um, and, and we can't we'll have Steve Hook with you tomorrow night, and you can, he, do, he does a great job with that yeah. emergency center. Great job. So, again, um, not to talk about income as much as I know we're talking about the budget, but we as a council have to make sure we, we mm. put the water rate increase through. We can't leave people in jeopardy like they were very close to, to being left in to, through no fault of anybody except for the fact that we, we have denied denied the possibility of these issues for too many years. It's, yeah, it's, it's years of neglect. I mean, we have, to, we have to fix it. And, and it's I, an, it's I really an old worry infrastructure. About, about what would have happened with a major fire. But thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Cruz. Councillor DiNapoli. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Chairman. Mr. Raleigh, good evening again. Good evening. And uh, I'm just going to touch base with uh, Councillor Cruz uh, did say about the, uh, the water, uh, water break that... Uh, you know, maybe it was an awakening for what the ordinance committee did the other night. And, uh, and I'm glad I was part of it, and I'm glad I suggested what we had to do. Not everybody wants to see a water increase. But, you know, uh, looking at, at that, we have to go through, I believe, three readings before you can tap into that money. And we're on summer session. So we have the month of June, July, and August. So it won't take effect, I believe, until, I believe, September maybe that you, the, it'll, it'll pass, that you'll be able to use that money. You won't get it right away. It's going to take three months for you to get that money. You know, I'm glad it will, it will help. You know, I, I, when I looked at your budget, I didn't like what I saw. You got your legs cut off. And I, you know, we, you, you, can't run a, you can't run shop like that. You know, let's pray and hope we, we don't have a major break like that. Because uh, like what Jay said, he'll have to go into the reserve money in his own pocket and get the money. You know, but, uh, you know, I mean, it, <laughs> it, it, it is what it is. The pipes are old. It's, it's time yeah. to step up to the plate on all of us and uh, city officials and, and, and take care of business. Yes, thank you. Yeah. All right? Thank you. I, I, I thank you again. And, and for the guys you work with, outstanding job, all of you, everybody. Did. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councillor DiNapoli. Councillor Moynihan. Uh, thank you. I know it is Italian uh, Heritage that's, Day, and that's that it. I'm it only ended, half Italian, so you skipped past in, me and went to DiNapoli, but that's all right. Councillor Cruz's ends in a vowel, too, am I right? What's that? I'm all Irish. Yeah, I know, but I know that, yeah. <laughs> He's all a lot of things, but we won't go there. Oh. <laughs> married an Italian. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just want to concur with, with Timmy on that, what everything he said, truly. And Larry, again, you guys did a great job. Um, just a question now, was Aquaria used during that and did they come up and um, do the job they were supposed to do? Yes, they did. I, the first call I made was to the mayor. The second call 
because when I came into my office at 6, 6 a.m., I answered the phone, which I never do, and someone said they didn't have any water. So I went to my general phone, and he said, Larry, yeah, the, the, and then the, all, the, all our alarms started going off. So I knew something was big. And, we get, and that's when we started getting all the calls from East Bridgewater. First call was to the mayor. Second call was to Aquaria. I called her, and I said, you better, get, you better ramp up and get this going. With that being said, contractually, we have to take a test. I'm just not going to have them bring water into the city without having a test. And that's a bacterial test that takes 24 hours. They were going to do the 18-hour test. But with that being said, I wouldn't have received any water until 18 hours after I made the phone call. So with that being said, once the state stepped in and said we, we, they're going to issue a boil, boil water order, then I could take it. Right. Needless to say, their test came back clean anyway, but I wasn't going to take the chance of having a ruptured main and taking, I'm not going to say, it, it, I can say, water that hasn't been tested from D-Cell, and that's in their contract. They have 24 hours to deliver, and I believe, Councilor DiNapoli, I did call you back on that question, and somebody else was asking that also, but that's how it, that's how it worked. So, so when they said boil water, then the, I, I, I said, give me as much as you can. So they, they delivered 3.2 million gallons. And, and how, so uh, how quickly can they get that up without doing the whole testing and stuff? Was it like with a couple of they, hours? They flush every day. Yeah. They just, I don't believe, I think they take a test probably just for the pee, but they don't take a back test, bacterial test, mm -hmm. until we want the water. And that's in their contract. They have 24 hours to, to, to send water to us. Right. So they fulfilled what you... They, they did. They stepped up to the plate and, and they and they gave us what we needed. Um, okay. And, and I uh, still have them online right now. I still have enough money to take some more water. I'm going to keep them online until I'm taking a million gallons a day now from them with no problems. Very good. And just to concur with Tim, as I work with the water department for my job from the gas company, Dig Safe and what have you, every day, every day, it's like... When you, when you get to work in the morning, you know you're going to have five or six calls for leaks in Broughton. So that happens every single day. And emergencies at night or whatever. So the pipes are old. We have to get this done. We have to, we have to pass that water rate increase. That's the only way we're going to be able to, uh, to replace these pipes. So thanks again, Larry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you, you uh, Councilor. Councilor Bonds. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So the $3.2 million that we were able to get was that the contractual limit, or was that just what you asked for, that's understanding that that's what I we just, need? I just asked for $3 million. Council, contractually, I think it's 3.56. Okay. Okay. And... Um, because, I, you know, I didn't want to take... Again, like Councilor Cruz said, I can only... We, they have to ramp that up. They just can't send me 3 million gallons just like that. Mm -hmm. They ramp it up slowly so I don't blow up any... They don't blow up any mains in the city. Okay. So we ramped that up. So it was probably, you know, I think, I don't know. I can't remember everything that happened that day. But um, by the next day, we were getting the three million per day. Okay. They ramped it up. And um, <laughs> the the cost that we are incurring now, and your your department is is there some is, is that just our portion of it, and we are sharing it with these Bridgewater or anybody else that helped, or is this all of our responsibility? The cost for the repair of the for the repair and, and that, all of that's things. that's our main. We have to, uh, the cost is all on us. Okay, okay. Even though it comes through different city uh, towns, wherever that main that was in our easement anyway. Okay. We maintain that easement. That's our property. That's our water main. We maintain it. Okay. And There's there 12 miles of pipe that we have to maintain from Silver Lake right up to Brockton. Okay. And you said that um, when you came in, uh, you got a call, and then all of the alarms went off. Yes. Were there or could there be ever like a foreshadow that something like this could happen? Because for it to go like that, for it to be, you know, so damaged or whatever the cause, I don't, I'm, I don't profess to know what the cause was, but is there any way to... Um, a warning? Yeah, or something. No. Oh. No, not with something that big. Okay. Something that big, it's just, it, it, the whole roof of the pipe just blew right off at a bell end. Okay. Um, there's no warning. No, I wish there was. Yeah. Okay. And with the, I mean, the only thing that I saw was the gentleman whose truck fell in the hole there. Um, are we obligated to him for anything or? Well, he'll submit a claim to the city and then we'll go, we'll let the, we'll let the lawyers handle that. Okay. All right. 
Okay. Thank you, Mr. Rowley. And, and I would like to echo my colleagues and um, think you've always been very helpful to me even in the beginning. And I appreciate you taking the time with me and, and ushering me through. And thank you for all your work this year, uh, the snow Welcome. and everything. So thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Larry. Um, I just wasn't sure if I heard you right. So, so the water donations weren't 100 percent donations. We're going to have to reimburse. Yeah, I believe they donated. I, you know, I don't really know, Councillor. I just got a call from Steve Hook saying, you better get some money because you're going to pay for some bottled water. And I said, what? I thought it was all donated. Yeah. He said, so many was donated, 7,000 cases, but maybe we're on the, maybe we're going to get billed for 5,000 more. I, who, I'm, who, who would that be from, though? The, the water? Yeah. Would it be Shaw's, Costco? I mean, who, who gave us that water? I don't know because oh, okay. I wasn't up here. I didn't okay. even, I didn't even, you know, I was hearing about we were giving out bottled water, but I, w I wasn't any part of that. Okay. We'll ask Mr. Hook tomorrow night on that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. No, I'll be yeah. happy to do that. Yeah. And, and I don't again, know if it was, if, if Nehmer, um donated some water. I don't know. You can probably yeah, ask Steve, Steve tomorrow. Steve will know that. Yeah. Um, thank you. And, and of course, everybody knows uh, I don't have any love loss for Query at all. Um, but I just wanted to ask a couple questions on, on this. Um, the desal variable charge and the fixed charge. Um, the department request was a million bucks. Yes. It was a decrease by 870,000. May recommended about 138 and change. And then on the uh, the fixed, it was an increase of about 79 grand from uh, department request to 6.3 to 6.39. Can you just explain to the to the council about those two two issues? Yeah, we, on, on the fixed fee, the yep. 631672 was not figured right. Um, Jay had to correct that to the 6395631. That's the correct cost. Okay. And the desal uh, variable charge, we did ask for a million dollars, Councillor. And as you can see, it was cut down to 138705 What was the basis of the a million dollar request? We wanted to take more water. Yeah, okay. We want to But the money's up. not there, so that's, you know. Yeah. The money's not there. Of course, we wanted to take more water from them. Yeah. When, when, you, when you call at 6 o'clock, yeah, you call the mayor, and then you call them, who is it that you deal with? Because we're not, you know, and Mr. Connor knows, we ask these people up here, they just blow us off. So, oh, no, no, I have a, deal with I, that guy Parenti? No, no, I, no, I don't. No, deal I, with the I deal point with, person down there? Yes, the plant manager is Linda Correa. And she just replaced the other woman that left. Oh, um, Linda Correa has been there since day one. Who, that Rebecca, Rebecca. Left. Rebecca McEnroe is, did, what, did, I don't. Um, She's gone now. Oh, she is. Yeah. Okay, that's news to me. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. But when right. the career is, what I have to do, I made a call to her first, but I also have to send a fax, a written fax, on what I'm requesting, or they won't, they won't give us the water. So it, that's that's contractual too. That's right in the contract. Okay. So I have to follow the contract, um, and that's that's exactly what I did. Okay. All right. Request my request. Again, thank you for everything you did, Larry. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Sullivan. Councilor Stewart. Uh, Mr. Chairperson, thank you. Uh, just a comment and then a, a question, a, sort of building on Councilor Cruz's question about the cost, which seemed fairly nominal. It would be interesting, interesting to know or just to comment that when businesses are not in business, um, that also costs the city a great deal of money. So the, the importance of, a, of infrastructure that's dependable is not about simply direct cost to the city, but how it impacts the economy overall in the city. Yes. Um, I'm going back to um, the DPW refuge. So the, the salary items in that budget, are they all at 100% full time? I just noticed that the director of, of the um, refuge is, um, um, the salary range is, is lower, quite lower than the other okay. directors in your division. So is that is that at 100 percent? They all yes, council. They're all at 100 percent. Okay. Yes. Great. Thank you. You're thank welcome, you, Mr. Chairperson. She's going on now, Jessica. Larry, you should tell some jokes while you're up there now. Well, are there any other questions for Mr. Rowley? <laughs> Kill a little, his, kill a little time. His, <laughs> his, his back is really bothering him. He'd like to sit down. <laughs> yes, I have one. Is Miss Betty Jean still mad at you for being out so long? <laughs> any other questions for the commissioner? Where are you buying tonight, Larry? <laughs> Wherever you want to go. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Anything else? 
Nope. 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 We're, we're all good. set. Thank you. We're set. Thank you, counselors, and thank you thank for all you. your support again in, in your understanding and, and being patient with us. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you for all you're doing, too. Really, we appreciate right. it. No, you're welcome. We're here to work together. Appreciate That's what it. It's all about. Very much. Thank you. Yeah. Counselors, um, moving ahead, because we might as well, because we have a few minutes anyway. So I just spoke with Mr. Condon, and I think we'll um, have him come up and we'll do um, that piece while he's here. And that takes care of one less for tomorrow evening as well. How's that? Mr. Condon, how are you? Fine. Oh, fine. We'll teach you some Vietnamese. Okay. Uh, Councilors, good evening. Uh, by your leave, I'd like to make a couple of comments, just a couple on uh, the overall budget. Yes, I may not, since uh, I won't be presenting tomorrow, tomorrow night, I may not get a chance to do it. I really only want to talk about two things. One is revenue adequacy. Uh, you've had a discussion on a portion of that tonight with respect to the water rates. I think um, I'm happy to see the action was taken by the, uh, by the Ordinance Committee. Um, we need desperately a water rate increase to begin to take care of the problems we're facing. It doesn't in itself take care of that problem. It's a phased increase. But, uh, Councillor DiNapoli, if we get action uh, this summer, because I don't think the next scheduled water bill goes out until August, if they delay that just a bit, we might be able to squeeze four bills into the fiscal year and get the full benefit of it. And it's worth a little bit over a million dollars in terms of uh, build revenue, so that would be very helpful. So we need that water rate increase uh, desperately. If we got it, uh, the uh, discussion about uh, the water overtime budget was right on the money. That would be the first place I'd look to restore. The pipes and fittings budget would be the second place I'd ask the mayor to send you a appropriation for because we need that money too. I would also recommend an increase in the variable uh, fee for the desalination plant. I think Larry's left, but if you were here, I think he could uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and I don't think I am on this statement. If we were regularly taking water from Aquaria, even if it were a small amount, then we would not have experienced that initial delay of their having to have a period of time to run a bacterial test because they'd have been already been doing that on a regular basis. So even if our buy were only a half a million gallons a day regularly, we could ramp that up to the three and a half million gallons. That may take a day or so, but we wouldn't have had that delay of testing that would have occurred, that had to occur as a result. And we were fortunate, I guess, we were able to get it into the system quickly because it did provide water for firefighting and pressure on the west side. And the reason we we're fortunate is the state unfortunately said you got a boil water order so that you know, nobody was going to be drinking it anyway. So that would be beneficial to have a little bit more money in that budget for that purpose. It is part liking the company or not is really another matter. I understand where you're coming from that on, uh, as a council. I know you feel disrespected by the way the company has responded to your request. But in the meantime, it's a part of the city's water system, and those are two separate issues. How do we handle the water supply that it's providing, and how do we feel about the company, and how do we deal in our relationships with them? To me, those are, those are two separate issues, and the, uh, the, the facility itself provides a benefit to the city and, and a needed benefit, and I think we should, we should restore that budget. The last place I'd restore it, and this bleeds over into the general fund, the water budget ought to be paying the general fund back the cost that we incur on its behalf. Uh, Councillor Cruz and I have had this discussion in the past. In a sense, because not all of the water users are Brockton taxpayers, some of them are out of town, we're asking the Brockton taxpayers to subsidize the water users who are out of town when we don't have a sufficient rate in in place for them to pay back the cost that the general fund bears for them. They're mainly health costs and pension costs, but there are some other costs as well. But mostly that's it. This year it's about $600,000 short. It would be the last place I'd be looking to put that extra money because the budget on the general fund side is balanced without that money, but it would be helpful to have it. We've got reserve issues that I think I need to spend just a couple of seconds on because you had a presentation from some commenters the other night which I think was uh, somewhat misinformed. <coughs> on, the, on the reserve side, the, the contention is made year in and year out that people look at the balance sheet for the city that was audited as of the prior June 30 and they looked as a big cash balance. There is a big balance on the various funds depending upon what the fund is called unassigned or it's called net unrestricted assets. Those kinds of numbers are, are accounting numbers and the numbers are derived based on complicated accounting rules. But what's important to understand is those rules are national governmental accounting standards rules. 
but the city of Brockton operates in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So what we're allowed to spend and not spend in terms of how we appropriate our budget is dependent upon what the Department of Revenue, which is the regulator for government, uh, municipal government finances, according to the state, what the Department of Revenue and the statutes that they operate under, what they will allow us to spend. So, for example, last night somebody said there was a $19.5 million available fund, unassigned fund that could be used to balance the budget. Let me just take about a minute and tell you what's in the $19.5 million. $13 million is free cash that's in this budget. It's balancing this budget. It's been balancing the budget for, the, for years my view is it ought to be used to pay for capital and to replenish reserves and pay down long-term liabilities. Instead, we're, we're balancing operating budgets. But the $19.5 million just went down by $13.1 million. .1 million. You can look at the budget order. It's in there. It's been in there for years. The second piece is the stabilization fund for $2.5 million. We don't want to use the stabilization fund. We want to retain it in case we have some emergencies. So that $19.5 million has already shrunk down to a few more million left. $4 million basically is what's left out of that. That's not available for appropriation because it represents accounts receivable, bills that the city has rendered to other um, customers of the city for which we haven't set up fully reserved uh, liability positions. In other words, if I send a bill off for $100 just in the case I don't get paid, I reserve $100. We haven't fully reserved all of our accounts payable to the extent, and we don't have to, we, we're not supposed to, but to the extent that we haven't, the Department of Revenue is very conservative and it says you can't have that available. What's left is called free cash, $13.1 million in the budget. So. That's, that's the end of my speech. I know it's frustrating for people who find those, find those statements uh, complicated. It's hard to bring it to a level so folks can understand it, but that's really the circumstance. And the biggest problem we're facing, I think, is that the state walked away over the last decade from about $10 million a year of assistance it used to give to the city that was unrestricted to use, and we don't have it anymore. They had budget problems of their own down there in Beacon Hill. One of the ways they helped to solve those budget problems was by cutting some of those accounts. Just one account for Brockton was worth $5.5 million. It was called additional assistance. Gone, not forgotten by me, but never coming back in all likelihood. The Quinn bill reimbursement we used to get, Councilor Sedensky knows we used to get about a million bucks from the, a year from the state to help pay for its cost, promised to communities for participating in the Quinn bill. We'll share it 50%, 50% with you. We entered into contracts believing that. We don't have the right to cut the Quinn bill reimbursement to our officers if the state doesn't give it to us. They don't. They haven't for years. That's a million bucks. Transportation reimbursement. If you're a public school system, which is regional, you get some reimbursement, not full, but some reimbursement for your buses. We're an urban district. I think our buses are just as expensive and it's just as important that we bus our kids. We don't get a nickel back. That, so that's enough of the whine, but there's about, about 10 million bucks that we don't get that we absolutely need. There's nowhere to get it. Nowhere. We restricted how we can raise revenues, property tax, charges for services, some of those water that we're just raising the rates, state assistance. There's not much left that we can do. We can either bring in new business, new investment in the city, which provides property tax revenues, doesn't put a demand on the school system. We can bring in residents, property tax revenues, often with school kids demands on the school system. Or we can go to the taxpayers and say, give us more money, which is, I think, the last thing any of you who are in elected office want to do. That's, that's our basic problem. Uh, I don't want to spend much more. I think I took more time than I thought I would. But we have long-term liabilities we need to address. M my budget itself is, is pretty straightforward. I do have a new position in there. I've asked uh, for a junior analyst funded for part of the year. Uh, the, the mayor has supported me in this. I think he feels we heard about the succession plan uh, last night. There's no succession plan if there isn't younger staff in my office working toward uh, the support of my office. Uh, you know, I think all of you know Mel Peters by now. She does outstanding work, um, but she could use some help too. That's what that position is for. I'd ask for your support on it. If you can't see your way full to full year support, it's only in I think for 10 months, but if you can't see your way free to that, I'd ask for some portion of it because I think it would be helpful in the work I do. But, you know, I've lived without it, so I can, I can certainly, I can't say I can't get by without it. The rest of that budget, I think, is pretty much as it was. There is a request for a little bit more money on the liability insurances because of premium costs. 
Thanks, okay. thanks for your patience. Thank you, Mr. Condon. Councilor Barnes? Uh, yes, Mr. Condon, just two questions, actually. The, j the last uh, budget with the water, was that created in anticipation of the rate increase passing? The, the, budget, the, budget so that, the budget that was submitted that had yes. all of those cuts? Yes. It was created in anticipation that there would be no rate increase. So if there is a rate increase, then we can come to the City Council requesting supplemental appropriations to restore some of that spending that was cut. Because I don't, the budget since I've been here, before I came, the city had some years where it had troubles with its budgets because it anticipated revenues that the council hadn't acted on, mm -hmm. put those revenues into the budget, spent those revenues, the council and the mayor didn't agree on the revenue changes, and therefore the budget was funded at a level of revenues that wasn't going to exist. I, I don't believe in doing that. We funded on a, on a more realistic level, level for revenues, and if you give us more, then we'll come back and ask for the right to spend it. Okay. I, yeah, I think, I think that's how I understood it, that this is what it would be if it doesn't happen. Yes, if it doesn't um, come through, this is what you've okay. got. Okay, and, and um, just for, for my own edification, you, you mentioned something about um, <coughs> some of the out-of-town out water users. We don't build them. Why? Well, we provide water uh, to the towns which are east of here as a re okay. result of our having the right to take from Silver Lake. We provide water to Whitman and Hanson. Uh -huh. So if we don't charge water rates which recover the full cost of water delivery, including the cost that the general fund has to eat and it should be in the water budget in a reimbursed basis. Uh -huh. That means that those costs are being paid, they're not being ignored, but they're not being put into the water rate, which means that the people who are getting water from us in Whitman and Hanson are getting a free ride on their share of those costs. Okay. Can we change that? Or? Um, well, I can't, we can't charge them, but we don't charge our own customers. You know, they're, they're on the system as of right. It's oh. a part of the legislative right that they had. Point of information. Uh, so to be able to modify that would be to increase the water rate. So those individuals outside of Brockton are paying a higher rate and covering are the difference. Ca because we're okay. making up the difference with taxpayer dollars from the general That's fund. That's right. Okay. I wasn't sure how to. Okay. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Right. Thank you. Thank you. You want to say, Council? Thank you, Council. Council Sullivan. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Condon. And uh, I, again, I, I want to thank you for clarifying a lot of uh, misnomers that people make. And again, if you're not an accounting or a numbers person, you're, not, you're going to be confused by... I, I think it's terribly yeah. confusing, Councillor. Yeah. It it's, not, it's not easy to grasp, e even if you've been trained in it. And I have to, I have to get refresher training myself because the, we, we prepare our books more than one way. There's one way which ends up with a so-called net asset accounting. There's another set of rules which ends up with these fund balance statements. And there's a third set of rules we use for the state of Massachusetts. The same cost, same transactions, three accounted three for ways. three ways. Absolutely. <laughs> no, and, and, and one of the questions is successor. I mean, if tonight I think Megabucks is $250 million, So if Jay Conner hits the 250 tonight, uh, he might be in Barbados tomorrow. I guess the, <laughs> question, the question I have, and, and it, I did get, we all got the letter that you got your three-year yes. appointment from, yes. from the mayor. Thank you. Um, yeah. and, and Mel does a great job. Uh, my question is, on a junior financial analyst for 34 grand, are you going to be able to get someone, first of all, for that dollar amount, it's based on 10 months, but nonetheless, 34 grand, that you feel confident, first of all, that's going to be able to be an asset. I guess someone's better than no nothing in your office. But, but for that money, um, again, you're talking public versus private sector. I understand that. But I guess what I'm trying to figure out is if, if, this, if the goal, long-term goal is to get someone in there, get, you know, understand it, get a real grasp of the department, and potentially move up the ladder, is, is, is that the right thing to do, in your humble opinion, based upon the dollar amount? Well, um, I, I think we can get somebody. It's a long way between that. This is an entry-level position, a very junior person. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. But um, about 12 years ago, uh, we had a junior analyst in my budget, and we hired a person um, at the time. Uh, he ended up leaving and going <coughs> on to a career in the private sector and did pretty well. He was replaced, uh, and he worked under Aldo at the time. Uh, he was replaced by two fellows. After Aldo moved on, we had two junior analysts. One was Chris Correa, who's ended up being with the city for many, many years now and does good work over in the school department. 
and the other one was a fellow that ended up going to work for Standard & Poor. Both of them came as, as junior analysts and they were pretty capable. Um, so I, I think the answer is yes. Uh, we have, uh, we're blessed with having Bridgewater State, Stonehill, and Massasoit right around the corner. Uh, it may be that a more likely candidate here with Brockton residency might be a local person who'd gone to Massasoit but hadn't finished his education, was looking to go on, but the first step was, you know, a working class kid getting that associate's degree and then getting a job and going on. I, ha I kind of have that kind of person in mind, and I think it would be, or he, she would be, it would be an asset, so yeah. I think we'd be okay. But that person would not be a CFO in two weeks, that's for sure. Yeah, and I guess one of my questions was, because, I mean, you're not going to get an MBA um, no. graduate with that, but, no. but, and that's fine. But I guess my question is, do, with, the, with the educational institutions that we have here, do you have an internship program in your department, or should that be contemplated? <coughs> no, it's not a bad idea, though. Um, the trouble with internships is the time drain. I mean, it's it's one thing to have a busy work internship, which I don't think it would be a particularly beneficial in my office for a student to be in that kind of a role. It would be better to be kind of shadowing than mm -hmm. in, interning in that sense. The question is, can you find a way to carve up your time in such a way that you're able to benefit the person who's in on an internship? Uh, last year we did have a uh, Massasoit student in the office on an internship who worked really closely with, uh, with, with Mel, and I think she was quite pleased with his work. Uh, so we have taken advantage of that in oh, the past. I wasn't aware of that. That's and great. So it's, it, it is, it is, and he was a Brockton, uh, Brockton kid. So it's, that, that's my thinking is we've got 100,000 uh, citizens here in this community. I think at that level there's somebody out there who would like to work for the city, who would benefit from the income and, and advancing his or her career, who would be an asset also to the office. Okay. Okay. I mean, I support that 100%, Jay. So thank you for all you do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Councillor. Any other questions <coughs> for uh, Mr. Conner, Councillor Cruz? I actually wasn't going to say anything, but I, I just want to talk about what uh, um, I don't usually just comment, but uh, Councillor Sullivan mentioned that uh, you just got you're reappointed for three years, and I, I just, with the way you've been treated by some ill-informed members of the public, I want to personally thank you that you're still here. And I, I worried about that. Just as I worry about pipes breaking, I worry about you saying, I've had enough and, and I'm leaving. Well, and the way you've you. been treated by some people, I wouldn't blame you. Well, I, I appreciate that, Counselor. I, I, to some extent, uh, you know, you're supposed to take it because you're in public life and that's what kind of goes with the territory. I, re I really don't mind most of it. Being called a liar, I don't care for but almost all the rest of it is, is not, a big, not a big problem. I, I think... Um, it's hard to convince people when they're of a certain mind that they're not being told the truth, that they are getting the truth, especially when the ex explanation sounds like gobbledygook. And that's the problem in the business I'm in. It can sound like gobbledygook, and maybe I'm more gobbledygookish than I should be on that. So if that's the case, I think that's, that may be, may be an issue. But as Larry Raleigh said, um, I feel privileged to work here. I was born here. My mother's father was city clerk here for 33 years. He literally died on the job. He died well, every time you go by the sealer of weights and measures, you're stepping on his ghost. That's he cool. dropped dead in that hallway coming to work as city clerk in 1953. Some of you would also my, know my dad's father was a post, uh, postmaster here for many years. Cool. My mother had an uncle who was the chief of detectives and chief of police. My roots in Brockton really, really run deep. And when my grandfather died, my grandfather Sullivan died, my grandmother, where I don't think was even 60 yet, and they did a, there wasn't a contributory pension system in those days. And the city council of Brockton did something to make certain that my grandfather wasn't, like, wasn't going to leave a widow who wasn't able to care for herself. And so the rest of her life, and she lived until 1985, well, so that's a long time, 30 odd years as a widow, there was money coming out of the city of Brockton treasury to t take care of Alice Sullivan. So I owe things to Brockton as well. I'm glad I have this job. I feel privileged to have it. I'm glad people think I'm doing a good job for the most part. You should be able to take some criticism and if something were to happen to me, it would take more than winning the lottery, counselor. Barbados though, Jay, you know, it's not bad. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you, got, you can go uh, and come back. Yeah. <laughs> you it's the go. Irish skin though, you might burn a little bit there. <laughs> yeah. you know? be no, in Wisconsin. I, I wouldn't leave the city high and dry if, if I hit the lottery. I mean, if, I, if I get knocked over by a bus, that's another matter. I can't. I can't <laughs> well, <laughs> I personally want to thank you and, and I also don't want you to suffer the same fate as your, your grandfather. So. Uh, <laughs> So don't 
don't be dropping down there. Uh, no, I won't be going. I should leave by the other door every night. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Thank you. That's right. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You, <clears throat> Any other questions for Mr. Uh, Mr. Condon? Seeing none. Thank you, Mr. Condon, and congratulations. Best Thank wishes. You. Thank you, know Councilor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilors, um, if you don't mind, um, keep your books open for a few minutes because I have talked with Anne Marie and she's willing to jump ahead as we've done over the years. We usually take the auditor's um, budget part out of order and that would save having, our, um, having the auditor come because she's still on a light schedule and then that way there she wouldn't have to be here tomorrow evening. So with that being said, uh, we're going to start with the first, um, first one which would be the auditor in itself and we'll go to uh, Anne Marie. Um. Our budget is level funded. Um, nothing's changed. There's no step increases in our department. Everybody's been here for a very long time. So, any questions? Any questions for the uh, Councilor Cruz? Just another comment. I want to thank you for all you've done. You know, Heidi's been, been ill for quite a while now. She, I know she's back part time, but uh, you've done a phenomenal job for quite a while now. And on behalf of this council, I want to thank you for it. Thank you. Great. <laughs> she definitely keeps me on my toes, I'll tell you. I First try. Of, boy, between the both of them, but in any case, but we'll go to That's the next thank one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's the auditor. Yeah, the also, just point of information, Mr. Council Chair, uh, um, actually talking about Chair, we want to thank Anne Marie because it was her efforts that you as president, myself, and any future presidents, we have a wonderful chair up there through Anne Marie's efforts. So thank you very much. Right here. I, I've, been, I've been enjoying it this day. Thank you. Thank you. So it's the, uh, the mail room. Um, the mail room is also, I believe, level funded. Um, we might have lost a little bit in the mail room. Um, we've been working hard to get. Um, the bulk rate, and we ended up getting a, a little bit of a discount um, through, in our mail room. Any Grab a stamp that one. Let's go. <laughs> That's it? Yep. Looks good. Okay, we'll move to the next one. She can we get the auditor's uh, telephone? They pay the bill. Oh, I feel like these are closet accounts. Well, on the telephone, we pay for all the telephone um, bills for the city. And that one's, it's been about average. Um, looks like we lost about 5000 but we kind of averaged that out after the, the last three years that we could handle a $5,000 cut in that budget. Um, does this, is this just landlines or is this cell phones too? Just landlines. Just landlines. And I believe some modems maybe, but no cell phones. <laughs> landlines and some modems. And is this not include school department phones? Or it does? No, we do, no, we don't pay for so this is just the city side? I believe it's just the city side. Phone lines. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome, Council. Any other questions, Councils? Seeing as then, we'll go on to the, uh, the last one, which comes under them as the retirement non Um You want to make your... Uh, non contrib we just have um, one person left on that budget. Well, Howard Newton, be, <laughs> Howard, Howard Newton be going on it when he retires? Uh, I'm sorry? Well, how would it be going on that when he retires? He goes back then. <laughs> I don't think fine. so. <laughs> Any questions, uh, councillors? <laughs> Seeing none, we're all set with that, and we appreciate you, Anne-Marie, for doing that. Thank and you. tell, uh, tell you. Heidi um, we appreciate the fact that she was going to be here as well. Okay, okay. thank you. you. Councillors, uh, anything else to come before us this evening? Mr. Chairman, if you could, just, just for uh, calendar purposes, if you could just explain again your... Uh, you're planning uh, as we're in the summer session. We'll, we'll have a, a hearing again tomorrow night. Correct. And then when, when will we have FinCom? When will we have council again this month? We'll, we'll have FinCom will be June uh, 15th, Monday the 15th, and then City Council will be the 22nd. Now tomorrow evening we could, if we wanted to, we could um, take some votes tomorrow evening. I've already talked to uh, Attorney Gilday about that. I think uh, we did that last year as well. If not, we can just do it at the next finance meeting because it will be on the agenda. Um, and then we would send everything back to the full city council. So it's all on what you feel you want to do tomorrow evening. So um, we can do it that way, whichever. Okay. Right. So, uh, we so the eighth, we have off Monday the eighth. There you have off. You yep. do have Monday off the. Yes, you do. Okay. We're, we're in at this, that session. particular point in time. We're in the summer summer scheduling. So. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yep. Any other questions or concerns? Seeing as none, 6:30 tomorrow evening. Thanks. Good job. <laughs>